Hello, 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 and praise the Lord. I pray that you all are doing wonderful on today, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time you get to watch this broadcast if you do not get to catch it now. And I said, okay, God, um, I don't know what I'm going to name this broadcast. I'm just going to hop on and, and, and say what you're telling me to speak in my spirit. But as soon as I was about to hit go live, the Holy Spirit told me to write, you are an original. You know, it's not something that I'm saying because it's, it sounds great to to say but it's absolutely the truth God is intentional when it comes to us he is strategic I mean God is so strategic for those who dealt with self-esteem for those who are depressed because they were born in a, 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 a poor family for those who were born in a, a rich family and wish that you struggled a little bit so you could fit in with your friends understand <laughs> that God is intentional he's so intentional he's so specific his purpose is so awesome you know and, and his plans for your life are so awesome that, you know, nothing in your life is going to be wasted. You are an original. Original. What I mean by that is that even you born in a project, even you born being born in a poor family, even you being the race, the, et the ethnicity that you are, even the different language that you speak or that you learned, you don't even know why. Your mama don't even know why she put you in Spanish. You don't even know why you said Spanish is the language that I want to stick with and kick all the way from high school up until college you know I just figured it was good you don't even know you're going to be on a missionary you don't even know that your book is going to be translated to Spanish you don't even know that God is going to use you in the Hispanic uh, uh, community and you black and you're white and you're Asian and, and you're, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, everything is intentional. Even we, we, we don't know. Sometimes we come upon, you know, uh, come to a certain place in my life, in our life. And we're like, boom, okay, God, that's why you did that. Wow. That's why I had an interest in this. Wow. That's why I had an interest in that. That's why. Oh my goodness. Goodness. Isn't it something? It's not the universe. It isn't, you know, by mistake or by chance, everything that you do, sometimes you don't need even know you know that you're doing something that goes hand in hand with God's perfect plan for your life you know what I'm saying so you are everything God did and concerning you was intentional all those people in the projects you grew up in the projects you know what I'm saying that doesn't mean that you're going to be limited to ministering though to uh to those uh people that have those type of mindsets that still want to stay there but God is making you versatile mm. Or versatile, however you want to say it, so that you can minister to the drug dealer, so that you can minister to those in the hood, so that you can minister in the streets, and then you can flip it and turn around and minister to those in the corporate world, to minister to those uh, uh, in the blue, uh, the blue collar society, and 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 those you know in the upper class. You know what I'm saying? So God, He does all things well. So don't despise your upbringing. Don't despise that you were you know born with one. Person don't despise or hold on to the fact you know and I'm saying this from experience you know even though I never did but I'm telling you not to don't despise or or be broke down or stay back in a part of your life that you have no control over I had no food to eat you know we had to eat cereal you know for dinner and all those other things thank God for keeping you alive thank God that you're here you know what I'm saying when the word of God talks about you know uh, nothing can separate us okay home Homelessness, hunger, none of those things can separate me. You know that some people actually leave God or don't want to have any dealings with God because they didn't have the type of food they wanted to eat, but you lived, but you didn't die, but you had something to put on your stomach. Come on now, but somebody sent groceries to the house. You may not have been able to go in the gap. You may not have been able to get your clothes from children's place. You might not have been able to go to them stores, wardrobe for whatever, wardrobe for whatever it was called. I'm in Merlin. Whatever kind of nice little stores that's up in your city that you feel like you didn't get to wear. You didn't get to wear the best tennis. You didn't get to wear Jordans. You had to, you had to wear Fordans. You had to wear FUBU or something like that for us buys. Why are we cracking on our stuff? But anyway, you know what I'm saying? You ain't had the Timberlands. You had the wheel on the side of yours. And you try to pull your little pants down. I did that. I did that. That was me. I tried to pull my little pants. Some of y'all tried to erase the thing off and draw a tree so y'all could fit in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But God is strategic. He is intentional. And he said, no matter, I'm going to show you, you are strong no matter what you went through in your life, no matter what you went through in your up. 
upbringing. It has, don't you know that I'm, I'm making you strong. I, I'm making your name great. I'm doing great things with you and your background. He kind of on both sides. Your background was necessary for where I'm taking you. God is saying your background, the things that you've endured, your experiences, although some of them may not have been good, although some of them were not in the plan of God, the enemy tried to do some things, but God is saying, I still preserved you and I still kept you. And all these things have shaped you to be an original in the kingdom of God, an original with a specific and tailor made uh, a tailor-made assignment. You have a tailor-made purpose. You have a tailor-made calling. So you don't have to try to look like nobody else. You don't have to try to do like nobody else do. You don't have to do like the world does. The Holy Spirit had me. Sometimes Holy Spirit just dropped things in my spirit out of nowhere. And I'm like, God, what's that about? What was that for? But anyway, so I was getting ready to leave. And I just started looking at the children. I was telling them, get your shoes on. We got to go. Who pulled this crap out? Y'all got crumbs on the floor. I had to shut the door three different times because somebody took a shoe off. Somebody, but anyway, this ain't what this is about. So anyhow, so I said, okay, God, I'm looking at them. I'm telling them, put their shoes on. Let's get together. And the Holy Spirit was just like, this is where it's at. The seed is in them. The ideas, the ideas are in them. We don't have to pull from the world. What do they do? Now, I don't know nothing about how they do stuff, but the Holy Spirit let me know. He said, look, they test kids. They sit up there and say, they, they present, a, they present certain things before them. They present certain things for them. And this is how they come up with the idea of what's hot for, with children, whatever they gravitate to, whatever they like, whatever they, I, I, I'm telling you, this is what the Holy Spirit told me i don't know in marketing or whenever they're about to bring up a, a the latest cartoon or the latest toy or the late latest gadget the holy spirit said they sit people in they sit they get a test group study of kids and they put them in front of stuff stuff and say which one see which who which group of toy or show or whatever they like the most they gravitate the most we let the world know what's hot we let them know what's hot our kids children let them know advertisers and all these people know what is hot, what, what is good, if you don't, you're not into slang, what's good, you know, what's going to be popular. We, the consumer, the people, the children, us, we let them know. So even that is even so in the kingdom. Come on now. God has given you ideas. You are an original. He's given you ideas. He's given you visions and he's giving you Come on now, even with it being the month of August, come on now, this is the eighth month, all new, 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 new. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Come on now. So God, he wants to give, he wants to give his people, he don't want us to have to recycle anything from nobody, especially not from the world, okay? He don't want us to have to do that. So I'm saying, understand that God is giving people ideas, new and fresh ideas, new and fresh visions, new and fresh fresh business ideas that have never been heard of, things that have never been heard of. The Holy Spirit was even speaking through that saying, watch your children. We will raise up young entrepreneurs that will not have to wait. They are originals that will not have to wait until they're 25. They will not have to wait until they're 35. They will not have to wait until they're 45 and 55 years old to be billionaires and to be millionaires. This is why for some of us, God is transferring that wealth. This is why God is using the gifts and the talents and the ideas that we have to set up, to take over, not to get hair. I say it all the time, not just so you can drive around in a nice car and not so that you can have a house that you don't want to invite nobody on where they can't sit on your couch that you didn't plastic everything over but no he's transferring the wealth over to the people that have a heart for God's people that have a heart for the nation that have a heart for nations of people that have a heart for those who are hungry they have a heart for those that are poor they have a heart for, uh, for those we over here in America no matter how crazy it seems we are still blessed and we know where our blessings come from we are blessed by God I don't care I challenge each and every one of you all to find a charity, find a place, find something that you can sow into as a believer where you can make a difference. You may say, look, I don't, okay, Holy Spirit, totally flip this and slip this and, and crisscross this real quick. Okay, but I'm going to let him have his way. Some of you say, look, I don't even got it to sow. I don't even got it to give. I'm sitting up here. Look, you know what I'm saying? You don't know. I had to eat chicken for a whole week. 
I had to make chicken salad. I had to make chicken soup. I had to make fried chicken. I had to bake chicken. Don't you know some people only have rice? Don't you know that some people only have grain? Don't you understand that some people don't have nothing? Don't you know what 25 cents a day, a dollar can day, a dollar can do a day for somebody who don't have clean water? We have to come out of this selfishness. That is, that is, that is, that may be America, that may be some Americans, but that's not the body of Christ. And see, this is why some people don't respect us in the body of Christ because they say, look, you are holding all this money in your churches and you are building and building and building. But what are you doing for the poor? What are you doing for those who are, are um who are in need? Every, everything that I do is not going to be displayed. Everything that I do is not going to be behind the camera and on Facebook Live. Everything that I do is not going to be once a month. That's something that we in the body of Christ should be concerned with always. There's people even sitting in the house of God that don't have no food that's going out leaving and, and leaving hungry. There's people of God. There are people. Come on now. We don't just say we help our people. That's how you win people over with your resources. That's why God is putting the wealth in your hand. Because when people need to come to you, when people need a difference and you are there to help and they understand that the reasoning behind your help or the drive behind your help or the reason for the resources that you have or why their mind or their eyes was pointing in your in their direction was because of God they will experience God's mercy through you they will experience God's grace through you they will experience God's provision through you so he's raising up a people and transferring to wealth to people that ain't stingy. People that understand that God give and God take away. People that understand that there are people that's really doing worse than they are. People that's not afraid to open their hand and give. Because they know as much as I give, he gives seed to the sower. We understand that God gives seed to the sower. And we're not delusional. And we're not looking at people when they say that like they just trying to get my money. They just trying to take my money. When you do things from a heart, from the right heart. And from the right place, and you give and sow into any person, any stranger, any church, any ministry, anything that God tells you to sow into, you know that you did it. You sowed the seed and you planted that seed because God led you to do that. And your increase may not be coming back in the form of money. Money. You may not know. You may need a healing next year. Not saying that you pay for healings. Not saying that you pay for healings. Not saying that you pay for breakthroughs. Because if God want to give a breakthrough, you're going to get the breakthrough if you don't have a dollar to your name. But he gives seed to the sower. He gives seed to the sower. Come on now. There's always we can't be selfish. When I don't have monetary things, I will sow with my gifts. I will sow with my talents. Quickly. And I've seen God give it back in whatever form that I need it in. If I need money, I could have done somebody's, I could have done somebody's makeup. I could have drove somebody and said, no, I, I don't want the gas money. And if I need food, I'll get food. If I need a couple dollars, God will have somebody drop something in my PayPal. I know. I know. And I don't do it to get nothing in return. And I don't try and I don't, I don't have to kiss up to people or get on here and say messages that will tickle you all with the motive behind somebody giving. Because I know my God will supply each and every one of my needs. And as long as my hands are open to give, they will be open to receive. Everything that the Lord wants to pour back and give to me. Hallelujah. So the remnant, it ain't about age that God is raising up. It ain't, it ain't people that stingy, okay, and don't understand the principles of God, the tenets of God, and how it's blessed to get more blessed to give. Because you know that God is going to keep you with income coming in. As much as coming in. You're going to be a blessing to whoever he tell you to be a blessing to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But like I was saying, mm, like I was saying, you are an original. 
You are an original. God was intentional when it came to you. So you, you, he allowed you to go through certain things. He allowed you to go through certain struggles. It didn't kill you and it won't kill you. So when you go through certain tests and trials in your life, there will be nothing that can separate you. There will be nothing that will be able to take you off course. There will be nothing that the enemy can do with you to persuade you, to bribe you. How you going to bribe me, dude? I, I, I've been broke before. I, I done had to eat. I done had to eat chicken wings and bologna sandwiches before. I mean, what, is this the best you have? Not allowing a deal to come. Is this the best you have? I'm, I'm on a budget. I'm gonna leave God because I'm on a budget and I can't. I can't get some Louis Vuitton. I'm gonna leave God because I, I can't get the latest outfit. I'm gonna leave God because I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I'm gonna leave God because I gotta stay at a, at a homeless shelter. Thank God that one was available. Thank God that they had a room available. If I had to sleep in my car, thank God I had a car to sleep in. In all things, I will give you thanks. When you are dealing with a great, a grateful believer is dangerous to the enemy. Okay, Holy Spirit, you kind of shifting this thing a little bit. You have your way because somebody on here needed. I, I feel you. A, a, a grateful believer is dangerous to the enemy because you can't do nothing with them. What can you take away from somebody who's grateful to God? I'll wait. Let me let me pull my hair back so so I can I can and my body pins so so I can hear. Okay, what can you take away from them? Somebody who's been poor growing up and ain't had nothing. What can you take away from them? Somebody who's been abandoned and everybody left. If God say, look here, I want you to go here. I want you to go there. What, what's stopping you? Nothing. So it all works for your good. Nothing shall be wasted. You are a threat. What you went through makes you a threat. Your experiences make you a threat. What the enemy tried to do to you, he don't even understand. He shouldn't have done it because that only equipped you to be able to stand for God, not care what nobody say, go alone, walk this road alone, go through whatever tests and trials come your way. Because when you was outside of God, you went through them anyway. He said it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So that means if I'm outside of God, I just might experience homelessness. I might experience trials and tests of all kinds. But at least if I'm on this side, at least if I'm on this side going through these things, I know who has my back. Okay, sometimes when we outside of Christ, I, 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 I'm a witness. He will preserve you. He will keep you. It's certain things that he might not even allow you to fall that deep into. Come on now. People have testimonies where they snorted coke and coke, uh, coke and didn't get addicted to it. Come on now. We know someone you snort, snort, snort that coke. You, you, some people get instantly addicted. But God stopped this and no, nah, this ain't, this ain't for you. You got drunk. That was the last time you ever got drunk. That, that's me. That's me. It didn't make me want that feeling again. It didn't make me want to go back again. He said that that, that part's not going to be your testimony. It was some people that might wanted to try to rape you. That that was me. He said that, that, no, that won't, that right there won't be your testimony. Not that I'm better than somebody who did get raped. Let me tell you. But everything that the enemy tried to use to destroy you is only going to birth out a ministry. God is only going to turn it around for your good. Come on now. How you say, how, how can something good come out of that? Because once you realize you stop blaming. Blaming your accusers, God will deal with them. Not saying blaming. And instead of you focusing on the accusers and what they did, turn that around and say, God, you know what? I know that you didn't do that to me. You allowed me to survive this. You allowed me to survive this. And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stay with you. And you know what? Now you sit up there. You done wrote a book about your life. Now you done sit up here and you're doing plays. Now you're an activist. Now you're doing all these things that will help other people not just get over rape, not just get over trauma that was done to them, but point them to a source that would help them to get through it all and that is Jesus because besides your therapy he kind of besides your therapy Beside all these things, the enemy trying to get you with depression, the enemy trying to get you with low self-esteem, the enemy's trying to have you wallowing and hold on to the memories of everything that you was doing that had happened to you while he's trying to hinder the ministry that you're supposed to walk through. 
That's not say just forget what you went through, uh, cast it aside and get over it. No, God is concerned about your pain. That's why he wants to heal you. God is concerned about what happened to you. But he's saying, don't let it hinder you. Don't let it hinder your purpose. It will not stop you from getting and connecting to people that you are supposed to connect with. It is not going to cause a, a rift in your marriages. It is not going to cause uh, uh, you to stay in wrongful relationships. It's not going to cause you to continue to live with the identity crisis. God says, I want to heal you. The Lord wants to take what brought you misery and turn it around into a ministry. You are an original. Nobody has your story. Some may be similar. They have some similarities. Some may have some similarities. Some may sound a little similar. You know, they might be a fraternal twin, but it's not it's not a um it's not an identical twin. You know, you are an original. Your testimony is an original. You know what you went through, your experiences are original. That's why God says that you are an original. So stop despising, stop, stop being, you know, even down to the, the low self-esteem and all these other things. Why do I look like I do? Why I was the darkest in my family? Why I was the lightest in my family and I, I got treated wrong. Why was I, you know, why was I, you know, not, not, not uh, asked to do certain things and my, and my sister was or my brother was because they were lighter or they was dark or because of who their father was or who their mother was. Your story is unique. The enemy will try to make it look as though and seem as though you were really the back, the black sheep that you were really rejected. But uh, actually, that just means that you were chosen. You were chosen to do a specific thing. You were chosen for a certain area of ministry, even your gifts. God is so awesome. Nobody Nobody can understand the mind of God. Nobody can understand why he does all the ways that he do. He's a bad man. And I mean that in a good way. I mean that in a good way for him to make you look like you look, make your nose, form your nose, form your eyes, give you curly hair, give you straight hair, give you thick hair, give you coarse hair, placing you one, the ability to sing, placing one, the ability to compose music, give one the idea to be able to run a successful business, give the other one the, the, the gift and the talent to be able to create, come on now, and that all go line in line with your purpose. He don't give you certain gifts. Is and then have you go into a certain area that don't match. He'll allow you to land jobs. Come on now. That go hand in hand with the gifts that you have. He will allow doors and opportunities to open to you. To position you in places where your gift can rest. Where your gift can grow. Where your gift can be developed. Where there will be room for an increase of you. Of your gift. Come on now. That's how awesome God is. That's how awesome he is. That's how faithful he is. So everything concerning you is intentional. Everything that's in you, nothing is going to be wasted. Absolutely nothing is going to be wasted. You know how to do what you know how to do because it goes hand in hand with your kingdom assignment. Come on now. God is so faithful. He's so, he is so, let me tell you, ain't nobody smarter than our God. He will place in a believer. Come on now. He said gifts come without repentance so we all have gifts just because I'm just just because we not at the same level don't mean that you don't have gifts what he do is he'll put a gift in you and then cause you to be a secret agent he'll give a believer a gift he'll deliver that believer he'll set that he will set that uh believer free then send them right back and th th this is what I'm saying I, I I love that scripture in the word of God where it talks about strengthen yourself then go and convert your brother and that's exactly what God did with me that's exactly what he's doing with you all he's strengthening you so you can go back and convert your brother and you know what your gifts do your gifts give you access to places come on now that uh, 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 that may otherwise may not have been open to you. Come on now. Your gift gives you access to get your gifts and your talents give you access to be in position to do some kingdom work, to bring some people out, okay? And, I, and if you remember the other the other posts and the videos I was doing, I was talking about the Lord had me to speak on a double portion of his anointing.
He's giving you a double portion of his anointing so that when you go back to use those gifts, when you go back to use those talents, when you go back to do the things that God has put in your hands to do, come on now because some of you, he's sending you back to the crew or back around the crew or back around people who get high like you used to get high, bringing you back around people that may get drunk. I'm not talking about sending you back to a club. I'm not talking about sending you back. You know, unless you're going to pass out tracks and do some work for the Lord. What I mean is sending you back around that type of person. It may not even be your old friends. It may be some new people. It may be some people at your job where they all get together and they party. And they asking you, you want to go to happy hour and get some drinks? Now, a couple years ago, you might not have been strong enough. So during that time, God had to strengthen you, brother. During that time, God had to strengthen you, sister. Because you might just have been, you might just have been found there you know getting your sip on you might have just been found there getting your drink on and somebody happened to carry you out and take your keys but now that you have been strengthened now that you have gotten to the place where you say God for for you I live and for you I die but on top of that God I'm saying no to every lie and every trick that the enemy brings to me I have been delivered I have been set free now you can send me back so now when I go on here and my gifts because my gifts and talents Okay, I may do makeup. You done sent me to go and do some of my makeup. And after we sit up here and we done did the whole backstage of people's faces, I'm not talking about just, just, and no disrespect to makeup counters and all this other stuff. Come on now, I would do it. But I'm talking about God wants to send you all some believers to some high profile clients. God wants to send some of you all backstage of of where they're doing uh, runway shows in Paris and all these different places because they need you. God will send you on a specific si assignment just for one soul. He will make your name great if you, are, if you are solely concerned with making his name great. Hallelujah. That's what he'll do. So why are you back there and you knocking the mic models out and after they sitting up there saying, hey, such and such, we're going to go back, you know what I'm saying, and party and celebrate the work that we did. We're going to smoke a little blunt, you know what I'm saying? We're going to whatever, would you, whatever, would you, we got that powder, whatever you want. We're going to have it on display. And you be sitting up there, not that you got your Bible out, your life just speaks. Come on now. You're doing makeup. You're doing brows. You're doing whatever you're doing. But they're like, it's something about your presence. It's something about you that's so calming. You know what I'm saying? It's something about when you are here. It's something about when they ask you to come out, that there's just a calm in the atmosphere. Come on now. What you doing? Why are you not going? You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's I, I'm not into that. Well, where you want to go? You just so cool. You just so down on earth. Something about your spirit is calm to me. Okay, we'll skip the party and we'll skip all the things that we were going to do. What do you want to do? You just want to go out to eat? Come on now. God is inviting you. Come on, even if it's just one. If everybody else want to go ahead and it's just one girl, it's just one guy that want to ride solo dolo with you and they just want to go and get a little sandwich with you because they, they not saved but they, they not turning up. They not saved or whatever. That's just not their thing. Come on now. Because everybody that's not a believer is not drinking, okay? Don't be fooled by what people don't do. Cause remember, you may you may not have you may have been a virgin all your life, but wasn't saved. You may not have drank, but you're the same. You may not have cursed, but you wasn't saved. So you can't go off of people's behaviors. But they may say, "I just want to sit with you. I just want to chill with you." Cause that I, I'm just not into that. But God has presented an opportunity and placed you right there. You are an original. He has given you your gifts and your talents to place you in unconventional places where you wouldn't be able to get if you didn't have them. He knows where he's going to send you. He knows what he's going to do. Don't doubt that God's hand is on you. Don't doubt that God has a specific plan. His plans are of good and not of evil. This is why God needs some of us to be delivered fully so he can send you into some of those places. Because if he to send you too early, it would be too much. Some of y'all are praying for doors and I opportunities and I want to make it big and I want to get this spot. This is the goal that I'm working towards. He was like, but you don't understand, believer. You're a little lukewarm right now. Okay. And because you are not, you are not submitting yourself fully to me. You don't understand. This may be your goal because remember my thoughts are not your thoughts, but it's somebody here on this level that I need delivered. And the deliverance is in your mouth. It's somebody here at this level that I need to be, that I need to be saved. And I need you to be at the right place 
in your relationship with me so that you can be a help and not a hindrance. Not giving them scripture, but then getting drunk with them. Not saying hallelujah, uh oh, this the meat, not the milk, but sitting up there getting high with them. Not saying I love God, you don't love God, and then you going to the club with them. When you know better, when you've been saved, when you've been filled, when he said, don't touch that, you cannot be a chameleon. You can't go back and conform because you outdoors. He's raising up a remnant that when you send them to Paris, they still understand that God's eyes is everywhere. He's raising up that understands that when they're in New York, when they're in Guatemala, when they are in Madrid, when they are in whatever country, whatever place, Whatever nation, come on now, whatever city, they are concerned about the heart of God. They are concerned about what displeases God and they want to make his name great. They understand that they are originals. They understand that they aren't better than anybody else. They understand that even when their sister or brother is not at the same place that they are, that their assignment is to continue to encourage them and pull them up because they understand that they have a certain level of influence or a certain place that God wants them to go. So no believers are left behind. But I got to keep moving. You are an original. And because God has made you original, you can't act like a copy. You can't act like a copy of the world. You can't copy everything that they do. You can't copy every single trend that they do. Because some of them are demonically influenced. God said, I'm going to raise up in the kingdom of God trendsetters. They won't know why they're covering up. They just know the skirt that you made is hot. They don't know why all your skirts stop at the knee. Stop. Don't show the black part of their butt. You don't understand why girls that call themselves bad bees and bad chicks are now rocking your stuff and it's fly. They don't care about your God and what you, but they rocking it and covering up because, because hey, uh oh, this, this outfit is just hot. This is just fly. This is what it is. This is what it's at. You like this top. You like this skirt or whatever it is. It, this is hot. I'm telling y'all, go follow them. Get you a skirt made. Get you a shirt made. And they get to your page and they like, wait a minute. She got a scripture on this joint. Wait a minute. Now, God set you up where you're doing conferences, teaching people how to sew, doing webinars. But you're like, we're going to pray before here. We're going to do this before here. And they're like, what in the world? But because you're in high demand, they got to sit through that prayer, even if they like this. Amen. Can we get to the sewing? I mean, I ain't come here for no prayer. But each week as you talk, as you teach, and they see something different and they feel something different and they understand that the prayers that they didn't want to hear in the beginning is getting so specific, even prophetic. Now you got tears falling from people's eyes. Now they reach it out. Come on now. Come on now. Everything about you is intentional. Everything goes hand in hand. That's why you can't take a break. Why do you think that you get opposition at your job, believer? Because you're still on assignment. There are still souls to be saved. There is an enemy because of your assignment that you have been targeting. He know who you are. Your co-worker work may have just met you, but those spirits know you. And I'm telling you, instead of a cuss word coming out of you, it should be more oil. There should be a breaking of more oil. The anointing. You should go to a every time you are pressed, every time there is opposition that comes to you, it should take your praise to another level. It should take your worship to another level. Oh, you didn't just broke the oil in me. You didn't just broke the oil. You didn't broke the alabaster box. Now I got to take my praise up to another level. Now I got to take my worship up to another level now I gotta increase my prayers hallelujah now I've been increased in the area of suffering now I've been increased in this area to be able to stand and to take hits and instead of a cussing word coming out I'm gonna pray for you sincerely and I ain't saying God bless you like a Christian cussing word God bless you sis no what I'm gonna do is say see okay I see this uh 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 or, or with my neck 
I would think that she just jealous. I would just think that she just mad because I came on board. But 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 my 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 spirit man is saying there is something that is in you. That the enemy is fighting against because you just might be a part of a, 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 a vessel God wants to use to bring her breakthrough. So I got to keep being nice. Even if I don't physically get to see the manifestation of my prayers and I leave this job. I know that you're still powerful. I know that they will be manifested. I know that you're going to deliver. I know that you're going to save. I know that you're going to set free. Whoever want to get it and receive what God has in me, you better get it while I'm here. You got to understand you are an original. That God is not going to have you just wasting oil and wasting prayers. Each one of them, let me tell you, you ain't got to see the manifestation right then and there. People better pull on you and thank God wherever you passing through. You know when somebody is passing through and they are teaching something good and everybody run to their class, whether it be spiritual or natural, a master haircutting class, everybody runs there. And let me get what I got. I can get out of them whatever knowledge I can get out of them while they here in my city, while they here in my home, while why they're doing these things when you know that you need to pull on somebody and you are an original that you got some stuff in you that people need to pull on those who don't want to receive it those who don't want to get it don't worry about that do what God sent you to do for the time that you're there we can't be stuck on these little minute things because they hinder us from getting to this next place they hinder us from getting to this next place and fulfilling our assignment. Some of you are leaving assignments early. Some of you are leaving assignments unfinished because of how you feel. Feelings is flesh. Feelings are flesh. We're supposed to endure. Your marriage may be an assignment. Friendships may be an assignment. Jobs may be an assignment. People may be an assignment. Projects may be an assignment. You can't leave off too soon. You can't leave off too early. Finish it. Just because an assignment was short doesn't mean that you didn't finish it. Your assignment could be a day assignment. It could be a week assignment. It could be a year assignment. It could have just been a say this, that's your assignment, and peace out and go. It wasn't to connect. It wasn't to stay. It wasn't to exchange numbers. It wasn't to go out to Chipotle. Hear God and be obedient. Hear him and be obedient. You are an original. You are an original. So you longer be like, God, but I don't have this and they had that. And they were afforded that, this opportunity. And some people, they rich or they come from wealthy families. And you sitting up here mad because you want to be like your friends. And you want to know what the struggle was like. Come on now, God put you in that wealthy family. He put you in a family where both your fa your family members finished college, went to college, went to school. It was uh, cum laude, all these other things. Because it's a certain place, a, a certain level of uh, uh, education, intellect, you know, background, upbringing or whatever that God needed you to have for the influence that you are going to influence. You don't have to be like nobody else. You don't have to be 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 jealous of, of, of anybody else's experiences. What they get to experience. God wants to give. God wants to bless you. And he wants you to be you authentically. But I don't mean just be you like some people say. I mean be you the, the be you that Christ wants you to be. Because what I was born into, that sin nature, that, that's not really me. I know my identity through Christ. This is the real me in Christ. But I pray, and I, I told you I was going to be quick. If that thing ain't cut me off, I don't know how long I was on here. But I pray 
that God will continue to equip each and every one of you. I pray that you all would understand that whatever you went through in your life, it was necessary for God to equip you and to empower you for what he has for you to do, for your purpose, for the destiny on your life, for the calling on your life. I thank God that this month, some of you will experience God, God's miracles. I thank God for the new doors, the new opportunities that God is opening up for you. I thank God for new and fresh revelations of God's word, of his scriptures. I pray that you all would be current. I mean, and what God is saying, that you would know what time and what season you are in in your life. I pray that you would recognize when God is speaking to you. I pray that you all would hear God's voice audibly. I pray that you will be able to distinguish his voice from the enemy. I thank God that he will give you clarity on decisions that you are waiting to make, on moves that you are waiting to make, on business business deals that you are waiting to uh, waiting to make. I thank God for giving you new ideas for business. I thank God for giving you new territory to step in, new jobs, new positions. I thank God for expanding. I thank God for overriding every one of that, every last one of the enemy's plans. It just fell on my spirit. I heard that the enemy was trying. It just fell on my spirit that the enemy wanted to take somebody out here looking by way of an accident, God saved your life. God covered your life. The accident was not what it was supposed to be. It was He kind of robosa. The Holy Spirit said it was supposed to be a fatality, but God, but God said He stopped it and He blocked it. Your purpose will not allow you to be taken out before time. Hallelujah! That's what we can thank God. We thank God for life. I speak against premature death over everyone watching this. I come against premature death over your children that they will fulfill the assignment on their life, that they would not experience or go through any any type of tragic or, 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 or traumatic uh, 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 things that the prayers that you will have been putting over them, unless it's a sign and will by God to be to a certain experience that they're supposed to have, but we pray against any harm, any any uh, we come against and we pray against any pedophiles, we pray against molestation, those who will want to hurt them. I pray that you will redirect them from wanting to come on at their schools, for wanting to come on as their babysitters. Lord God, I pray that you would direct and cover the minds of every parent, that you would give them mm, direction concerning their children. In the mighty name of Jesus, that the teachers that will be in their classrooms, Lord God, that their spirits will be right towards them. We pray against shootings in their schools. We pray against mm, mass in the mighty name of Jesus, even if we can't have prayers in the school, we know that your prayers from our house, from our car, from these streets will go wherever we assign it to go. There is nothing that can hinder our prayers. Going forth, and we thank you, God, for covering our babies. We thank you, God. We come against every will and bad intentions. We come against every enemy, every terrorist. Every dream snatcher, every witch, every Jezebel spirit that will come on jobs, in churches, disguised as friends. Hallelujah. We ask you to remove, God. You've been removing. You've been uprooting. So we thank you, God, that you would remove everything outside around us and also everything in us. Gut us out. Purge us. Cleanse us. Purify us from everything that's been keeping us from getting to the level that you would have us to get. God, let us not adapt to anything outside of your will for us. Allow us to walk in our authentic purpose done before. God, you were putting some people on the map to be the first to do some things. And as long as they know that you've called them to do it, it may not look like what it should. Hallelujah. But when they open their mouth, Lord God, we know that your name will be all over it. Your name will be all over it. Your name will be all over it. I thank you for delivering your people so that they can get to the place that you would have for them. So that when you send them in these unconventional places, when you send them behind the TV sets, when you send them behind uh, behind the cameras, when you send them on the set of movies, God, when you sit them behind the runway, when you sit them with 
these high pro profile clients, when you sit them with the millionaires to show them homes, Lord God, when you send them, Lord God, behind award shows, Lord God, when you send them in the production and the producer's chair, God, wherever you are sending your people in this time where a believer would not be looked to look to be at or in position that, that they will walk in boldness, that they will not fold, that they would not buckle, that they would not compromise, that they would not take down, that they would not conform, that they would not jump on the bandwagon, but they would stand boldly, that they first got, that they would operate in excellence in whatever you've called them to do. Whatever gift God allowed them to operate in, in, in excellence, whatever talent, let them, uh, let God, those who need school, open the door, God. Those who need finances for school, Lord God, do it, God. Those who need training, Lord God, and don't have the money, we pray for miracles for you to make it make a way so that your people would be in position to take over. Allow people to pay for their classes. Allow people to pay it forward. He kind of robo city. Allow people to pay it forward for them. Instead of gifts of hair. Instead of gifts of jewelry and shoes, God, let people give your people gifts of schools being paid off, classes being played off, gifts, mm, monies, things to equip them for kingdom work. Not for what they can wear on their body, but where their body can be positioned in this season. God, we thank you. We thank you for it now. And we praise you. We praise you. For these unseen opportunities. We thank you Lord God. That you have things coming down the pipe for your children. That have not been spoken of. That have not been thought of Lord God. We thank you for doing exceedingly. We thank you for exceeding our expectations. God we thank you that we're about to see. Why we went through all that we went through. We're about to see. Why we went through all that we went through. We're going to see why 2015, 2014 was so hard. We're about to see why the oil had to be press. We're about to see why we were rejected. We're about to see why God had to cut and sever some relationships. We're about to see why we had to move where we were moving. We're about to see the manifestation of every promise God has promised for those who have held on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready to be wild. Get ready to be wild. For those of you who have turned down your plate and thought it not robbery, hallelujah, to sow into the people of God. Every person that has sold into anybody, anybody being led of God, I thank God that it's being multiplied in your life, that it's going to the place in the areas that you have been prayed for. I pray that this prayer waters the seed that you planted. He kind of the most high. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for this remnant. I thank you, God, for this strong people. I thank you, God, for this strong people. I thank you for these bold people. I thank you for these courageous people. I thank you, God, for these warriors. I thank you, God, for these conquerors. I thank you, Lord God, for these mighty men and women of God who are ready, God, who are armed, ready to go into battle, ready to stand, ready to exit. And go into everything and possess everything that you have said that they would possess. And just like when God was telling them, okay, I've given you Canaan to possess, hallelujah, but they're giants there. It doesn't matter what giants are. It doesn't matter what giant is occupying, occupying your place of blessing it's got to come down because God says I've already given it to you I've already given it to you some opposition <laughs> hallelujah some opposition that you are is only an opportunity for God to be glorified every giant that's taking place and taking occupancy and the places that God has given to you don't worry, they will be moved because God already said it's yours. God already said it's yours. It's some people waiting for you to show up. 
It's some places, it's some things, it's some networks that can't go to the next level until you get there. It's some people that can't get to their next level until you, God, uses you speaking to their life because of your experience. Hallelujah. Some of you are waterers. Some of you are planters. But God is waiting to give the increase. Hallelujah. He is waiting to give the increase. And I thank God. For each and every one of your lives, I pray that you are encouraged. Please know that you're already blessed. Know that you're already blessed. I love you all. Amen. Y'all got me sweating. I'm out of here.